My name is Valentina Guerrero. I am the CEO of Salva Health. Our first product, Julieta, is an AI-powered device that provides affordable and accessible early detection of breast cancer, especially for women in underserved communities. Hello. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Valentina, founder and CEO of Salva Health. We're on a mission to save lives through early disease detection. Our first product is a portable and powered by AI screening device for breast cancer, specifically designed for underserved populations. By the way, the shirtless man beside me is intended to be there. No need to call security. <laughs> Let's go to the demo for a minute. While I present, my partner Andres will be running a full screening for breast anomalies on our volunteer. We will come back to them at the end. Now let's go back to the slides. Breast cancer is the leading cause of death by cancer amongst women worldwide. And this is even more alarming in developing countries. Globally, over 70% of breast cancer-related deaths occur in developing countries due to late diagnostics that happens in up to 60% of cases. And unfortunately, this causes the survival rate to drop from 90% to 30%. Early detection saves lives, yet in many regions, access to screening exams is a luxury due to their high costs, requirements of specialized infrastructure and personnel, and even for women that do have physical access, the pain, the discomfort, and the general fear that they endure make it impossible for them to get regular screenings. In Colombia, for example, less than 5% of women undergo regular preventive screenings. And that is where our puzzle at Salva begun. If women are not able to reach the exams, then the exams must reach the women. And it is with this objective in mind that we have developed the product Julieta, a portable and painless screening exam that allows us to offer any woman, anywhere, a chance of a timely diagnosis. Our device is able to detect healthy and unhealthy tissue, so we can identify the women that are at risk of breast cancer and have them prioritized for a proper diagnosis and treatment. Julieta is a breakthrough in accessibility. It eliminates all current access barriers by offering a radiation-free and painless screening that can be performed anywhere. It is a non-invasive and highly portable device that doesn't require specialized operators because it is powered by AI and that can run a full screening with results in under five minutes, which makes it ideal for rural clinics and community healthcare centers. And it is also cost-effective to produce, which guarantees its affordability and profitability. Over the past five years, we've partnered with Sura, one of the largest insurance companies in Latin America, to develop Julieta. We've screened over 2,300 women in 11 different healthcare centers in four cities, and we have achieved an impressive 82% accuracy, which is comparable to traditional screening exams. Our team is our strongest asset. Salva Health is composed of 12 experts amongst professionals in AI, hardware, software, and business development, as well as a high-level advisory board and allies. Each member contributes specialized knowledge for Julieta's development, from product design to regulatory compliance. We have already filed for patents on our device, and we're waiting for a regulatory approval in Colombia so we can pilot launch in Colombia and Mexico in early 2025. Additionally, we're already working towards FDA approval, which will expand our borders into broader markets, including developed countries, that can benefit from offering a more comfortable solution at a fraction of the current cost. However, to fully launch, we need funding to grow our operations team, finish filing on the legal and regulatory processes, and expand production. This will allow us to scale quickly across Latin America and beyond. With our Colombian regulation alone, we will expand to six markets with a market size of 100 million women. Combined with FDA, we're looking at 17 countries with over 1 billion women to screen. That's where Julieta's impact comes in. Our business model is designed for scalability. We operate a hardware-as-a-service model, primarily working with insurance companies. This allows us to distribute our devices to healthcare providers without the burden of acquisition costs. We then charge the insurance company per screening, remaining in control of our devices to guarantee their quality and continuous improvement of our algorithms. This model not only makes breast screening affordable, but also guarantees that Julieta remains accessible for women that need it the most. At Salva, we created Julieta because we believe that all women deserve the chance to start the battle against breast cancer on time and with dignity. The time is now for innovation in early detection. 
Healthcare systems worldwide are shifting towards more effective and scalable solutions, and Julieta fits perfectly within this trend. Now let's go back to the shirtless man. Let's switch to the demo. While I was presenting, Julieta was able to run a full screening on our volunteer, including validating for electrode connectivity and successful data transfer. It then uploaded that data to our AI where it was interpreted, and the process finalized with a screening result that has already been securely stored in the patient's profile. For the time being, congratulations. You present no significant risk of breast cancer and are clear to go home. We look forward to your next visit in six to 12 months. Now let's go back to the slides. Julieta is an opportunity to revolutionize breast cancer detection. It is not just a device. It is a lifeline, a solution to a global problem backed by a rigorous team and a clear path to scale. Join us so we can give all women and men the chance to win the battle against breast cancer. Thank you. Thank you, Salva Hell. Judges. Hello. I, I'm just curious, relative to a traditional mammogram, um, what are sort of the false positive and false negative rates, and how do you um, think that you would distribute it? Is it really through primary care physicians, or is it through clinics, or uh, breast cancer centers? Like, w what are you envisioning? Right, so in terms of uh, accuracy, we are at 82% sensitivity, 84% specificity. Those are the false negatives mm -hmm. and false positives. That is comparable to a traditional screening exam that is between 80% and 90% accuracy overall. In terms of distribution, Julieta is thought as an opportunity for all women. So what we want to do is massify screening alternatives. For Colombia and most of Latin America, the alternative is to partner with insurance companies that agglomerate most of the patients mm -hmm. available. So our strategy is to distribute through them so that we can expand uh, through their network so that we can reach most patients. Through them However, to the doctor. Through the insurance companies to distribute the devices to the healthcare systems that they contract with, correct? And then we don't have to charge the healthcare centers per screening or per device. It's actually the insurance company that is going to take care of that. However, we do know that Different countries have different healthcare systems and they behave differently. So our business model is intended to be adaptable to those countries. In that sense, we are also thinking of offering the devices directly to the healthcare providers, to the pharmacies, to other alternatives, including out of pockets for patients to pay for their screenings, which is why the, fra the cost of our screening is actually very, very low so that people can afford it themselves. Additionally, we're also working on a second version of our device. So this is the institutional version, the one that we're launching today, but we're also working on a personal version that can actually be bought by patients and used at home as well. So we have invested in a lot of diagnostic companies, but more centered on the US. I think I like your strategy that you want to go through the pairs because they already have the networks. But how do you get the reimbursement code from them and what ROI are you showing to them? Because they want people not to essentially go on to have this problem and pay for it. So how have you thought about it? And then I have a follow-up question. So how do you get the code and what's the ROI for them? Perfect. That's a great question, actually. So we started this model with insurance companies because we partnered with an insurance company in Latin America to develop the entire research. That's how we got to know the system in, across Latin America, and we realized that with seven, in the case of Colombia, for example, eight of the largest insurance comp cover 80% of the population. So the strategy is to go through them. The disimbursement is directly through the companies. Um, again, the strategy was designed with them. The ROI for an insurance company comes in the reduction of screening using a mammogram. So mammograms should be diagnostic tools. They shouldn't mm -hmm. be for massive screening. What we are providing the insurance companies is an alternative so that they can massify screening to identify the women that actually need a mammogram for diagnosis and then to use the actually expensive screening on the women that actually need it. So for example, if a standard Julieta test costs about $20 for an insurance company, a mammogram costs them $100. That means that if we screen the entire population of an insurance company with Julieta, the 20% that we identify as at risk, which is like the standard, 
would then take a mammogram. It would cost them $100. We're still looking at a cost efficiency for the insurance company of about 66%. And that is just if we do one mammogram and one Julieta. If we do two Julietas per mammogram, this cost reduction for them is still at 44%, which is where the cost efficiency is significant. And what cost do you need to be for this to be pervasive? Like so the, the main costs? In, yeah, no, for the hardware and your device. Right, so the cost of one device of production is about $300. And then per screening, we have some disposable components that are about $1.60. Um, and then we have like the operational costs. However, we have already optimized our operations so that we can monitor the devices remotely and the devices themselves have systems that can detect errors, which means that our um, efforts humanely are reduced. I'm curious what, <clears throat> what the breakthrough was that enabled you to do this at a much lower cost and how you think about the defensibility of that. Right. So. In terms of defensibility, first of all, it, it's a patent that we have on our device and copyrights, the design, in the industrial design, it's all protected. Um, the revolutionary d device or the concept is that we are not doing diagnostics. We are identify the women that have risk of breast cancer. Diagnostic will continue be, to be used with traditional exams. Our advantage here is that we understand underserved populations. We design the device so that it can be used in extremely rural conditions. It doesn't require internet connectivity the entire time. One, with one charge, we can do up to 1,000 screenings at once. And because we don't expose women to radiation, we can actually increment the population that can be screened with it. So we can screen women 18 plus throughout their lives and with a higher frequency. There is a big component here, and it is that uh, big players, for example, are more focused on improving the accuracy of diagnostic exams and then focusing on treatment as well. This is an underserved population because it is a market that not many have explored. And in terms of smaller players, the data that we need to actually train a new device is extremely specific. And of course, this is a market that is very regulated. So having a strategic partner like the insurance company has been a key part of our development so that we can guarantee that Julieta can actually be con well, first of all, trained and then compared to a screening exam traditionally as well. You mentioned that the access uh, to existing methods is, 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 a, is an issue. Uh, but going through an uh, insurance company, but it sounds like the place where the tests take place is still in hospitals and clinics and so forth. How has the access issue been improved uh, as a result of going through insurance companies? I'm sorry, could... Uh, access of treatment, or access of tests. Right, so there's, if, if I understood uh, your question correction, correctly, this is about first massifying the screenings where it's not available, and then after that, Correct. when we prioritize the women, then it will be the insurer or the healthcare provider that will actually get them on the patient journey for diagnostics and treatment. The benefit here is that because of Julieta's conditions, it is very portable and it can actually operate in lower uh, resource healthcare centers. Was that the question? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how by going through insurance company is still get more uh, women access it's, to your device. Right, so uh, the insurance companies have coverage in many different type of healthcare centers. Some healthcare centers don't have the infrastructure or the resources to have a mammogram. And because breast cancer is one of the prioritized uh, diseases by the World Health Organization, insurance companies are still incentivized to provide screening alternatives for them. So this is an opportunity for both healthcare providers and insurers to be able to use at least an identification system for women that actually need a mammogram, which means that we can distribute our device to the healthcare centers that don't have the actual uh, infrastructure right now and then prioritize the women from there. Are you seeing that in Colombia right now? Is, is, how is that happening? Yeah, so in Colombia, for example, that's, that's exactly what is happening. Uh, we have, through the insurance company, experienced distribution to healthcare centers that don't have ultrasounds or mammograms available. And what we do with Julieta is we give them an alternative, so they screen their population with that. And then when we identify the patients that are at risk, the insurance company will cover the expenses so that they can get a proper mammogram. Can you share like, any stats on your scale at this point in Colombia? Of our like scale? Right. Yeah. So right now, 
We are still waiting on regulatory approval. We were just last week we got approved for medical device manufacturing, which is the first step of a two-step validation uh, for commercialization. We have screened over 2,300 women in total in 11 different healthcare centers in actually four different cities, which has allowed us to validate the distribution and logistics of actually having the devices work. And we are pilot launching with two different companies, so the insurance company that we work with and a healthcare center group in Mexico in early 2025. The way that we can do that is that through the INVIMA, which is the FDA equivalent in Colombia, this entity is actually a, a regional recognized authority, which means that other sanitary registrations in, Latin, in America actually recognize the, this is the INVIMA's processes of validating our efficiency, security, and quality, and they allow us to penetrate their markets quicker. So with our in VIMA approval, we can actually enter most of Latin American markets immediately, which is how we're going to get tra traction next year. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. okay, please give it up for Salva Health. Thank you.